Hey, what's up, Reefers? So I've been pretty terrible in terms of like keeping up maintenance in this 45 gallon tank. The light just came on, that's why all the car looks pretty crappy, but still, you can tell some of the damage that have been done for the neglect from the last two months. For example, the kryptonite has really receded back. Um, the Xenia has really overgrown on the rock. Uh, the Green Star Pile has been overgrowing that Zoa plug, and I have been trying to uh, scrape the Green Star Pile off. And you see the Aiken has really suffered over here. And I've seen these happening for the last... Wait, what is the clownfish doing down there? Well, okay, all right. Scare me for a second, because I just turned on the light, so I guess the fish are kind of confused. Um, why are you out of your bed, man? The male clownfish kicked the female out? Weird. Anyways, but basically my point is that the tank has been really neglected. Just look at the layer of algae up front. At least I, I know I still got at least two snails working hard. Thank you guys. My first order of business is scrape the glass and then I'm gonna do a water change. I've done some water tests because I kept thinking maybe I'm having an elk swing. That's why um, the candy cane is suffering. Same with the A can. I know a little bit a while before I had some salinity problem. So that kind of made the A can recede it. But it has been about two, three weeks and I was expecting it to kind of start growing back but it's just holding steady, not really recovering. So something else is still up. That's why I'm trying to do a water change. So without further ado, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna clean up the glass. I'm gonna do a nice water change and then um, I'll probably frag up, the, uh, frag up the kryptonite. I have a feeling that maybe it's part of it is being shaded over here or something stinging it. But nothing should be reaching this area. So I'm kind of confused about this portion right here. Okay, so for the longest time, the Black Widow anatomy has been missing in action. <laughs> Finally find out where it is. It's right among, I can't even get my fingers in there. It's right among the uh, frog spine branches. Man, I'm kind of torn. I don't want to move to frog spine colony. So I just got to find his own way out. Uh, good luck, man. It's been missing action for about three weeks. Holy crap, all right, this is tough. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I need, <laughs> I seriously need Emily here. This is my secret weapon. A fork. I've used this fork to catch the uh, baby blue tang uh, to remove the remove them from the 45 gallon and I've used this fork to remove a lot of bubble tip anemone and I use this fork to feed a lot of uh, reef roid as you can see it's actually still dirty back here but what I'm gonna do right now is trying to get the black widow bubble tip anemone out of this frog spawn colony. I'm gonna use the smooth edge. I'm gonna reach in and just kind of Irritate his foot a little bit until I can get a finger underneath it to lift the whole thing off. The good thing is that the frog spawn usually has a skin, a pretty slimy skin near the base. So I'm hoping that the foot will be easy to lift off. Moments later. Alright, the fork did not work out too well because the bevel is a little bit too thick and the an anemone a little bit too small. So I switched over to toothpick. Now don't try this at home, but I've had pretty decent luck with toothpick as well. I basically just kind of dulled out the tip so it's not super sharp. And I tried to lift the foot first and I was I'm pretty successful. So the foot lifted. Now it's just a matter of um Kind of peel off the foot along the perimeter as, as, as good as I could uh, and with any luck it should just detach and float off I hope I'm filming this because I can't really see and I'm focusing mostly on the coral there we go and I have to be really careful using the side of the toothpick not the point when I'm doing the lifting because the last thing I want is put a hole in the foot it'll be terrible uh, for the most part, bubble tip anemone is super hardy, even when you tear them to pieces, they typically regenerate. But, you know, that's, uh, that's still the last thing I want. And this situation is especially tricky because I'm among frog spine cluster, and for whatever reason, my frog spine has been pretty potent in terms of stings. So I try not to touch it as much as I could, and I think about 75% of the Anatomy's foot is off now. Just trying to get the last bits and we will be good to go. Oh, there we go. It's off. There it is. And there it is. Yes. So here's this little tiny black widow bubble tip anatomy. That's actually a good spot for it. 
All right. Whew, there it is. And the reason I want to do that is because it's not getting enough light um, tucked within the colony, and it seems to not be able to find a way out. Or maybe just like it in there, I don't know. But it has shrunk to maybe a quarter of its previous size within the three weeks. Uh, the good thing is that I know I fed it about three weeks ago, so it has that going. Um, but we'll have it out more in the open so it gets some light and I can target feed it a little bit better. I hope the flow is good. But that area should be good because that little, little crevice right there, if the flow is a little bit too strong, it could always uh, buckle down and tuck in. And bubble to anatomy likes to hang upside down, meaning that they have to attach near the ceiling and then reach, like curve down and reach out. So I think that should be a good spot for it. Really glad to finally find it. I was wondering where, where it went for the last three weeks. Um, Yep, so that's one down and I'm gonna address the other things. All right, so the second thing I wanna address is not the Christmas tree, but this overgrown frag plug. Uh, basically, there are three polyps of uh, candy apple that has been really suffocating by the green star polyp that onto, got onto this plug. Um, I have been meaning to take out the GSP for a long time, but I've been procrastinating, dragging my heels, and this is the results. The GSP has completely taken over the plug. So today, I am gonna use two tweezers, to try to scrape the GSP off should not be a big problem at all because frag plug is pretty porous so they should be easy to scrape. So let's get to it. Two thousand years later. All right, here it is, nice and clean. So before the GSP was growing on the frag plug and it was irritating the polyps, so they're not even opening fully at least. Um, so now hopefully they will be opening fully again and start spreading. All right guys, this next bit pains me a lot because this is one of my favorite coral that came out of the drop off tank. This is the kryptonite candy cane that has been doing fantastic until uh, recently, I checked the alkalinity. It, it's sitting pretty at nine, really stable. So honestly, I don't know what happened. Um, but as you can see, we got a cluster of good polyps here, a cluster of good polyps here. In the middle, we got some receding polyp. Uh, so I'm gonna frag it. I'm gonna frag this in half. I'm gonna put this in two different locations of the tank, and we'll see if that makes a difference. And to frag this up, I got three options. Number one, I can use my hand to break it off, which works easily, but uh, I may not be super precise. Number two, I have a small bone cutter from my frag kits. And number three, I would use a Dremel tool to Dremel it. But since um, the branches are pretty thin, I think the bone cutter should do. There you go, that's one piece. So here's one. It's kind of popped off. And right here, I'm trying to get to the middle portion that is pretty much dead. Um, so I'll cut this one off right here as well. Here will be the second piece. I'm trying to get as much stem as possible for each section. And this is a piece that is pretty much gone. And I cut this off. So here it is, we got four clusters of kryptonite candy cane. Uh, I think we got three nice ones and one that is dying. So I'm gonna leave that piece, probably this piece as well on the frag rack and these two I'll find home within the tank. Uh, guys, look at this, little tiger tail cucumber. It was a lot longer. Well, the last I saw him in this tank, so I guess the eating is not that good in this tank. Um, I mean, he does also have to compete with the um, uh, Sand Tiger Conk. Yeah, it's like a tiny little guy now. Oh man, I feel kind of bad, but hopefully soon you have a 150 gallon to clean up. So for now, let's swing him back up there. Whoops, I think I may have dropped him on the frog spawn. All right guys, so everything are back in the tank. We got the kryptonite candy cane opening back up. That is the uh, better looking portion. And up there on this side is a, is a side that's kind of got some damage right there, but it has opened up and looking pretty full. So I think it likes a new spot. 
The one back there I'm not too sure about. Um, it may take a little time to recover. And the piece that got the worst of it was uh, on the frag rack right there, crossing my fingers. So we'll see how they do. The, uh, the Black Widow anemone was over there and then it moved. I know um, right before a light turns on, it moved a little, it parked right up against the uh, Rose Bolt of Anemone, but let me see if it's still there. I actually don't see it anymore, so it may have moved. I was just afraid it got sucked up, but it's not sucked up. So it's probably, it's probably just covered by the Rose Bolt of Anemone somewhere underneath it. And swing over here, we see the uh, candy apple. Uh, so it started started to open up, so that is good news. The A can looks the same. A cans look the same. Um, this one actually recovered quite a bit already, and that's actually another piece over there. Uh, it's really far away. Can't really see it, but it's right there. Uh, that has a. Uh, it's kind of holding on for dear life. I don't think it's gonna recover. But besides that, everything else looks all right. The torch got a nice sway going. Um, I think like I was tweaking the gyri, I was able to get a little wave effect going. But it has not really opened up as large as before, especially the Aussie Gold Torch in the back. So I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. I'm probably going to do a ICP test. Uh, there are many companies for ICP tests, so I'm trying to figure out which one I want to go with. Uh, I believe I've tried the Triton once, so I may try some of the different companies just to see if there's a difference. Uh, there certainly is a price difference. And that really cool thing is that Ghanipora is growing new polyp. You see in between they got like those baby polyps. So I learned that that's actually how they develop larger uh, baby polyps. So it looks like the Ghani is growing which is good news. The Christmas tree worm rocks is doing good. The SPS actually turned green. It used to be like a tan color so this is unique. Uh, so it's like a green color now, it's really cool, and the Rasta is doing really well. And all the Christmas tree worm, let me see if we can get them to... <laughs> Not really, they're getting bolder and bolder. Usually as I get close, they just started hiding, but nowadays they just kind of stay out. The Christmas tree worm rock is doing really well, uh, all the feather dusters doing good. I, I feel like there's actually more now, which is cool. And we see back there, there's the uh, tiger tail. Sea cucumber, <laughs> the starving one, poor little guy. Mm, the other noteworthy thing is that the Gonipora Gogonian is running into the frog spawn, so I got a frag bag as well. But that is pretty much it for this update. For the most part, I just kind of cleaned the tank a little bit. I noticed that I still need to clean the back wall and the back paint. Uh, the back, uh, the t this thing is closed, uh, it's like peeling off, so I got to fix that at some point. But otherwise, uh, I think the tank is kind of back in shape. Things are starting to open up again, so the water change did it a solid. All right, with that said, I'm going to check in with you guys next week again on updates. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.